Okay, this is New Hampshire Track and Field.com, powered by Runners Alley, coming at you from the Zoom world, maybe from Boise, maybe from New Hampton. Um, we're here with NCAA 800 meter champion of 2022, Christy Schofield from Merrimack Valley, as well as her coach from high school, our very own Dave Irving. Uh, first question, Christy, obviously on everybody's mind is how does it feel to be have that title NCAA new, uh, champion? It's not like holding a record that's made to be broken. This is a title that you hold forever. How, how does that feel? Has it even sunk in yet? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of weird. Like, I don't feel any different, but whenever it comes up or whenever I kind of like think about it, it's it's pretty cool. But I mean, I don't necessarily feel any different. <laughs> Hey, Dave, as a high school coach, you, you, you coach an eventual NCAA champion. I mean, that initial reactions are how it feels for you. Uh, just, I mean, super good. You know, I, uh, I embarrassed my family when we were watching us. We don't have ESPN at the house. We we're at a, uh, a local eatery and, you know, I was standing up and, and whooping. But, um, yeah, it just feels good, you know, to see her run that fast and uh, just – just a continued improvement over the years is wonderful. Cool. Well, let's, let's stick with the race itself, Christy. You know, it's obviously we've done a lot of reading. We, we've, we've heard a lot about um, the season and, and kind of how it matriculated where you guys thought it was a possibility during the season. You obviously had the leading time um, nationally, you know, and then the rounds went well. Take, take us maybe through the season, and it, but it's specifically the race, maybe prelims then into the race and how it all developed for you. Yeah, I mean, I think we kind of tailored the indoor season and the outdoor season as well around um, kind of peaking at the NCAA outdoor meet um, as far as like training goes and like workouts and stuff. Um, but as far as the race goes, I mean, I had a race plan. So I just like our plan was just to execute my race plan. And, you know, if everything went well there, we knew what the outcome was going to be. So. <laughs> so, so take us through the race. Obviously uh, there was an early leader with the race. And I, I remember thinking to myself, man, that's perfect. That's perfect. There's a target right there. She doesn't have to shoulder the burden of, of leading the whole way. Um, like take us through the, the actual final and what, what your thoughts were and, and uh, where you thought the pressure might come late or, or whatever. Yeah, for sure. So I was actually sick last week. I had like a head cold all week. <laughs> um, so during the prelim, I was like, I was pretty sick. So I was feeling a little bit better on Saturday. Um, but I was still pretty nervous before. Um, but I mean, she took it out. She went out in like, I think, 26, 27. And then she was through the four at like 57, seven. So, I mean, she went out, that's like 150 and 159 pace. So I'm like, if she's going to run 158 right now, like that's her race. <laughs> uh -oh. She's going to win. But, you know, I raced against her at regionals um, and like I had a pretty good idea of where her fitness was. So I kind of just, I just wanted to chill and like come through what I was comfortable coming through in. Like we we're thinking probably 58 high. Um, was a good spot for me to come in through and then 129 through the 600, which is pretty much what I came through. And I think, and then um, we just focused on kind of pushing the third 200 and then closing really, really hard the last 200. Um, so that was my race plan. Um, it executed pretty well, but yeah, I wasn't too nervous when she went out that fast just because I didn't really think she was going to run 158 on that day. But she did more power to her, right? Exactly. I'm like, if she's going to run that, then her race, she's going to win. <laughs> so what did it take us through even the last 100, though? I mean, that, that was great, you know, the third 200 and focusing on that, getting through 129. But, you know, the last 100, just you were just so powerful. Um, what were your thoughts, maybe even – towards the middle and then obviously when you put your hand over your mouth and realize that you won thereafter you know take us through that last 100 if you will yeah I mean I think Irvin can attest to this but I've always been somewhat of a kicker so and I'm pretty confident in my fitness right now and at like with 200 to go if I'm there and everyone's there I really don't I don't think anyone's going to beat me right now so coming to the last 100 I was pretty confident that 
even if someone was to come up on me, like I would be able to react and like, I knew I was going to win the last hundred basically. So I was just kind of trying to keep my composure and finish the race, but yeah. So then, uh, well, who was, who would be the only person, maybe the only competitor that you were worried about that last 100 or were you just that confident that no one could overtake you? I mean, I think that like the level of talent in that final, I think any given day, like any one of those nine girls could have won. So, but I mean, I was pretty confident. Cool. Cool. And then yeah, I noticed, you, sorry, I ahead. noticed earlier in the season um, that you had kind of, it seemed like you had fixed the one kind of weak spot in your 800 meter racing. And that was always the, from the 450 to the 550, you know, right after that first lap, because you've always, like you said, you've always had a kick. You've always been able to run their first half great. It was just that one little, one little bit just past the halfway. And when, and when I saw you moving on people earlier in the, earlier in the season, I was like, she's put it all together now. You know, there's no stopping you. Yeah. That's awesome. So then uh, when you're finished, you know, hand goes over your mouth, you can't believe it. You, you sit on the track, still in disbelief. Can you remember any of that? or pretty clear yeah or... I mean like I think a big part of being successful and like winning these big races is you know like visualizing it in practice and visualizing it before and like really putting yourself in that situation and being like like I can do this like you need to like manifest it also sorry if I'm shivering I just took an ice bath so I don't know if my voice is weird but <laughs> that, that's why um but yeah, um, so, I mean, you can visualize it as much as you want, but when it actually comes to fruition and like when it actually happens, I think that's what I was more like kind of in disbelief because I always knew that I could do it. I've known for years I can be an NCAA champion. Um, but when it like actually happens, that's like a whole different feeling kind of, you know. Yeah, that's cool. Do you remember any of the thoughts that you had immediately thereafter? Were you looking for mom right away or? Um, yeah, I mean, I knew kind of where she was sitting. Um, so I was like just looking up because I wanted to like see her reaction to it. But yeah, yeah, no, that that's great. That's great. Does that um, does it compare to anything, you know, winning the NCAA title? I mean, you've won, you know, nine d2 titles moc titles you know new england's uh that new england title your senior year is there any comparison to anything in high school there is one thing it compares to and i would say winning um the manchester invite what? for cross country <laughs> <laughs> Why is that? i think that was that was my one other win that i have always been very proud of but so what year was that I mean, the senior year or was that your junior year i can't remember no, that was, shoot, I think it was my sophomore year. I think it was your sophomore year. I think it was sophomore year. But, I mean, all of those things are, like, every win is special. Like, winning Mountain West is special. Special Winning New England's was special. Winning MOCs is special. Like, they're all special in their own respects. But winning the Manchester Invite at that time in your life, that was one that you're like, man, if I could win that, then I've arrived. Yeah, that's one of my greatest feats. <laughs> that's country. a hard course. <laughs> <laughs> no, I agree, yeah. especially, especially with someone at 800. Sorry, Dave, go ahead. No, no, that's, I was agreeing with that. Also, uh, one of my favorite, one of my favorite memories of your win is that is that Laux Games win because that was your first big 800 oh, yeah. meter win, and uh, you know the dive across the finish with Layla Leia Salas was great. I forgot about that. That was a good one too. <laughs> No, that's, that's why I'm good. here. Yeah, there you go. What about the reaction? What kind of react? I mean, it's obviously been a bit overwhelming, but I, I'm thinking specifically New Hampshire. Have you gotten a lot? We, there was a great Concord Monitor article. Um, you know, what, what has been the reaction? And, and even, you know, from personal friends, I mean, as Walker John obviously said something after that <laughs> shout out, we hope. We did have a spot yeah. on him a few years ago. I, I saw that. I did do some reflecting on that, but go ahead. Yeah, I mean, I think it's, like right after initially it was a lot like it took me a couple of days just to like get through you know all the all the responses it's pretty much 
everyone I went to high school <laughs> like either texted me or messaged me on Instagram um but it's all it's all super nice um there's been a lot of just like I think today I got a Facebook message from some random guy in Penacook and he was like I, my MV alum I just want to say congratulations <laughs> I'm like, I don't know how these people find me. I don't know how they like see this stuff, but it's a lot of stuff like that. It's all really nice. And I try to like get back to as many people as I can. But I'm like, sometimes with the random people, I just, I'm like, I can't. <laughs> but, but you're here to say right now, you appreciate all the randomness and all the, all the good stuff, but you might. Oh yeah, of course. Of course. Yeah, good, good. What about Boise when you ride back to Boise? Yeah, I know. It's been a lot. I've been doing a lot of um, like media stuff for Boise State, um, a lot of radio and like the KTB, our like local news station. Um, they brought me all booked out this week. <laughs> I had to make my <laughs> limit two a day because if I do more than two a day, I get too like grouchy. <laughs> <laughs> are we the first or are we the second today? Uh, you're my only one today. Oh, cool. Cool. You, we, we took away your day off. Now I feel really guilty. No, I, I prioritize this one. <laughs> all right. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. So all this high school talk, you know, um, of, of the great reaction from Pentecook, great reaction from Merrimack Valley, you know, you could take this question wherever direction you want. You know, how did your high school experience, it could be athletics or otherwise, or growing up in New Hampshire even, and you could take the twofold, you know, growing up in New Hampshire, but also your high school experience as an athlete. How did that prepare you for, for college and especially for this moment? Yeah, I think like I had such a good high school experience and I was lucky to like have a really good supportive coach. And I think that kind of taught me like my like my core values of what I want in a program and what I wanted um, slash what I needed to be successful. Um, but I think just having that like really small intimate teams like and just like a like a really good relationship connection like with my coach with my teammates um you know I think that kind of prepared me and also like showed me what's important for the next phase and I'm even like using that now to move on to the next phase of like my running career just like my values and I think a lot of those values um came from like my high school and middle school experiences yeah I mean even your it, it seems like you're pretty humble I mean you're pretty matter of fact with saying you always knew you could be an NCAA champion and that's not that's just confidence and I feel like that's like New Hampshire confidence and your humility <laughs> is definitely from New Hampshire because um we're all kind of humble in our own ways I mean and we got a little bit lucky too because there is so there are so many fast girls that were showing you know, what was possible and raising the, raising the limits of, you know, of racing in New Hampshire, like Hannah Parker was, was one that we always kind of emulated very similar type of runner. Um, you know, and what, like, we were just looking, we were just talking the other day about, um, their four or five sub five milers or sophomore year, I think just a, a really good group of competitive girls to, to learn off of and race and, you know, and build, build yourself around. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was really the, the, back then. Not, it wasn't just Hannah Parker, Leah Salas, Corinne Kennedy, um, Megan, Megan Duty. Duty. Yeah. Just all of them. I mean, it, it was amazing going after state yeah. records, uh, 800 duty was going after the 1600 record. It was just, yep. it was super yeah. fun to watch. Even, even if yeah. we couldn't all coach all the, all of them together, but it was really fun to watch. So yeah, yeah. honestly, like I don't know how many times I've watched Jackie I was, was going to say, I don't know how many times I've watched that, uh, um, the meet of champions 800 from your senior year when there's three girls and they're all just neck and neck all the way down and they all go, you know, 209. It's just crazy for New Hampshire. So we might've used that uh, picture a couple of times this week. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really good picture. So, um, yeah, I have poison ivy all over my face. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. So we won't ever use it again, but we probably will. No, it's okay. <laughs> just don't zoom in. Right. No, no, no. Yeah. Um, so like, wh what do you think could help like the aspiring high school kid, as far as advice from a, from an NCAA champ from their home, 
state, you know, what would be your message to, to an, a student athlete that, I'm gonna ask you a follow-up question to this, but what would be a, your message to a student athlete to, that's aspiring that maybe think they have what it takes for the next level or, or to even dare to, to think they could be an NCAA champion? What would be your advice with that? Yeah, I mean, I think going back to high school and just like, this is something I've been thinking about a little bit lately, just the progression of coaches that I've had. You know, I think each coach has kind of taught me something and something that stood out to me that, you know, Irving taught me in high school and kind of like showed me, I think he showed me how to have fun with running and how to always keep it fun. And he kind of like cemented like my passion for running and my love for running, like at that younger age. And I think that's the most important thing, like in high school or like even in middle school, like learning to love it and like having fun, like with your teammates at practice, like just like being goofy at meets, like not taking it. I mean, obviously like taking it seriously, but like not treating it like it's the Olympic trials, <laughs> you know? Um, and I think that has like, that has been such a big base and like such a big foundation for me to have like a successful career um, was just the ability to love, love the sport and like be passionate about it and just always find like joy from it, you know? So when that's pretty powerful. I mean, that's a, I think that's uh, that's what we try to do at Co Brown too. Is that first and foremost, you have to love it. Um, when have you drawn off that the most? Did you did you draw off of that value, you know, even this past weekend, or did you draw off it at other times? Like, when did you draw off that sort of foundation of of enjoying it? I mean, I think that really comes into play when um, you know running isn't going fabulously I like progression and success is never linear um so there's obviously there's natural ups and downs like and I think that you know that's really important when you know you're not having the most success whether that be like you know you just don't want to like get up and do the workout or you don't like I don't know you have a a race that doesn't go fantastically like you can always go out the door and go for a run. And like, I think just having that base of like knowing deep down that you still love this, even though it's not like, not on the surface, it's like it's not very glamorous right now. Um, I just think it, it keeps you going. Like it keeps the day-to-day -day grinds like manageable almost. All right. I think that's a good segue to my, my next question then, because we're obviously seeing you at the highest of highs. Do you have any advice for, student athletes, especially in high school, that it might not, we don't get to see them at the lowest of lows, you know, mm -hmm. that fall back on that love, or is there a practical um, advice or strategy you use? Cause it, everyone goes through those downs. So is there a practical yeah. advice you can give when you're, you know, in not such a bright place? Yeah. I mean, like, especially with running, like it's such a, like an ebb and flow of just, you know, the ups and downs. And I think it's so important to realize that like, that success is not linear and nobody's um, success is ever linear, but also like the comparison of you to someone else, like you guys have, this is something our coach or my coach told me freshman year. Um, he's like, everyone has their own graph and everyone has their own chart and your graph your like whatever your progression is is never going to look like anyone else's so why would you ever look at someone else and be like why why am I not running like her you know like why am I not having her success why don't I look like her stuff like that so I think it's just important to just always kind of you know focus on yourself and kind of eliminate those distractions that are around you you know don't create barriers for yourself that don't exist almost yeah lock in block everybody else out and focus on yourself that's great yeah thank you christy um all right here it is that everybody always always looks forward to and especially those that love you what are your shout outs you just won the ncaa mm -hmm. championship 
Oh, wait, wait, I want to go back. I want to go back. What's next? What's next? You're, um, you're going to go to nationals um, next week. Um, and then, and then what do you, what are your hopes with that? And obviously you have the whole granite state in Idaho pushing for you. Um, two states. That's pretty awesome. Probably a lot more fans than just that, but um, what, are, what are you hoping for next week? And then uh, what are your, what are some of the thoughts about beyond that moment? Yeah, I mean, I want to make the final. It's three rounds. So it's a Thursday prelim, Friday semifinal, and then the final is going to be on Sunday. Um, so I want to make the final. And I think with making the final, that's going to um, either be a sub two or a two flat race. So both of those things are my goals going into that. All right, and then beyond, do you, do you know what direction you want to go? Are we we're going to be thinking professional running, trying to go that route at first? Or what are your thoughts with that? Or is it too early to tell? Yeah, I mean, that's no always been my my end goal. Um, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm navigating that right now, all of the steps uh, to take for that. But I'm running for Boise State at USA, so I'll be under that until then. One more uniform. Are you happy for the week in between to give you a chance to let this settle in and then re regroup and refocus? Oh yeah, definitely. I took a couple of days off after. Good, good. All right. I jumped the gun before, but here it is. Shout outs, Christy Schofield. And obviously there's a lot of people that help with this. So here's your moment in at least New Hampshire to give shout outs to those that, that, that you want to thank. Yeah, of course. I mean, just shout out the whole state of New Hampshire. Might as well. Oh, <laughs> Yeah. Uh, shout out my dog. He's sitting right next to me. <laughs> uh, but yeah. That was not Dave Irving and Walker John. Oh, oh I'm here. Course. She doesn't have to shout <laughs> me out. <laughs> like that goes without saying. They already got the big shout out. Yeah. That's right. Okay, Coach Irving. What, what about you? Your shout outs. I'm putting you on the spot. Didn't even warn you about this. Can oh, you sure. Know? Um, you know, shout out to. Christy's mom, absolutely, for, you know, <laughs> trusting me whether, and her dad as well, for trusting me whether those, you know, those four years in high school, they weren't necessarily the smoothest, the smoothest things. Um, shout out to my code track coach, Bob Mullen, um, for putting up to, yeah. with me and Christy. Um, you know, shout out to my dog. She's next to me as well. Uh, shout out to my wife for, you know, all the times you're not at home when you're at these track meets and cross country meets. That's all I got. Awesome. Awesome. Well, well, thanks guys for coming on again. We celebrate with you, Christy, and we'll obviously be pulling for you. You guys heard that straight up next week, Thursday, Friday, and Sunday, you know, get, get, uh, that's probably, it's on ESPN most likely. So let's view in and, and give her all the support in the world. Like once again, congratulations, New Hampshire track and field.com powered by runners alley right here in the granite States. So three New Hampshire, one of our own, MV's Christy Schofield and Sibylle Champ. Nice. Thank you.